Hello and welcome to Blank First Page. My name is Lucas. In this video, I've got a couple of Pilot Kakuno fountain pens to try out. Since they are colorful and fun looking, I think they're meant to be like school kid fountain pens. I thought I'd use a school themed field notes notebook as well. This notebook came as a special edition with one of the quarterly subscriptions in 2017. It reminds me a bit of some traumatic school memories sitting in exams looking at this notebook, but we will push through. And because they are colorful fountain pens, I thought I'd break the only black ink rule and out of my collection use this diamine midnight blue black ink and this pomegranate red herban ink. So let's get into it. So these pilot fountain pens are themed. They're meant to be like characters. And what I've got here is the mom and the son. I think there's like a father and the daughter version as well, but I, I haven't seen them. The difference between them is obviously the color and also the nibs. This blue one is a fine nibbed pen and it's got this blue etching of a face on the nib to represent the sun. And then the mother nib has some eyelashes and it is a medium nib. In a previous video, I was talking about Parker cartridges and how annoyingly different they are to the standard fountain pen cartridge. Uh, here's another non-standard one. But in this case, I think they've actually made an improvement over the standard. If I take the back of the pen, we're left with the cartridge, which just comes completely out. And the first thing I notice about this is that the opening at the end is nice and wide in comparison to say the standard one here, which has this narrowed color at the end. And the reason I like that is that because it is so wide, it just feels like it makes more secure contact to the grip than the standard ones do. Sometimes with the standard refills or standard piston converters, I feel like I'm, I push and I push and it never quite gives me sort of a, a click or anything that you usually get as feedback to say, yeah, this is now securely in place. The other nice feature that they've incorporated, which I have seen in some other piston converters, is these little ball bearings. And I don't exactly know what those are for, but my guess is that they keep the ink from being too stagnant, sort of. Sometimes when you have a cartridge filled with ink, an air bubble can get caught and keeps the ink in a certain place, which can mean that it starts getting gunky and attached to the piston converter. But with these ball bearings sort of constantly moving around, you don't have that risk. The back of the feed, for some reason, reminds me of the tongue or the gills of a whale. It's a cool design and it is quite different to a standard feed like what's on this Muji pen where the feed texture runs in the opposite direction. I don't know if that actually provides any ink feeding benefits, but it just looks cool. These pens individually, they cost under 20 US dollars each. So now let's fill these pens up with ink. We'll do blue and blue and red and red or red and pink and get to writing. Now this is exactly why I much prefer using the syringe method of filling inks. I just thought I would try direct now because I was using two different colors of inks, but I'm not sure the mess is worth it. I am expecting these fountain pens to be quite nice to write with. Japanese fountain pens are always solid quality. And even though these are cheap, I think these should write quite well. So this Field Notes eight page blue book made from recycled materials. I am not expecting to be the best at taking fountain pen lines, but this will be a fun notebook to use. It is literally only four individual sheets of paper stapled in the middle to make eight. Okay, I might switch to the blue because the red isn't looking great on the front here. 
the pen posts quite nicely no threads or anything to worry about scratching up the back of the pen so you can post with confidence unposted it's probably still a good enough size but i think i might like writing with it posted I always talk about this but the fine is giving a bit more of that feedback of the of the nib on the page and if you watch my videos you know I like that so definitely leaning more towards the fine but we'll give the the medium a bit more of a chance in a minute I'm obviously having some issues getting the ink out of this pen so let's switch to the blue pen and see if it's the paper or uh, if it is just that pen. It is very, very frustrating and it is only putting down ink intermittently. There's too many variables here. I'm not sure if it is the ink itself or the nib. I can see the ink coming through the, the feed and when I, when I shake the pen hard like this, the ink is flowing. This is a very nice red. If there is such a thing as a black red, this is quite close to that. I do think it's the paper that's at fault, not the pen itself. And I wrote here on this nice paper, the pen was performing much better. No skipping. I'm gonna put this pen away. It might need a better clean. It might need different ink in it. It is a medium nib. Um, I'm not super enthusiastic about medium nibs anyway. So we'll move on with the fine nib for now. Okay, so the quick verdict on this paper, uh, great for novelty purposes, not for much else. The bleed through is phenomenal. To... It made it all the way through to the back cover. I wrote here, it's like paper towel paper. You can see that when I just left the nib on the page, the ink just 
gets sucked out like on a paper towel really. So I do want to write a bit more with it. So we'll use some nice paper. Okay, so these pens were actually quite fun to use. The medium one gave me a bit of trouble, but I think the paper that I was using here is obviously not that great. On the other hand, using this paper, the pen was a lot better, although it did still skip quite a few times where the blue pen ended not. The fine and nib pen wholeheartedly recommend. Really en just an enjoyable fountain pen, nice and light. It's got a, a good grip to it actually. It's, it is not super refined or fine. It's not likely to slip. The cross section of the pen is hexagonal which is a common thing for uh, Japanese-made handles to be. I've got a chef's knife that is the same way, and there's something very counterintuitively natural feeling about a hexagon shape in the hand. You think maybe something round and smooth feels comfortable, which it does, but a hexagon shape does not feel pointy in any way, even though it has all these edges. In the crook of the hand in particular, even as you roll it around, the hexagon cross-section sits quite comfortably in the hand. Posts really well, fine nib, don't need to say any more about that. Has the nice detail at the back, this whale's chin, which I'm a big fan of. Definitely suitable for school kids. It's made of plastic, so it's going to be resistant and resilient to being dropped and thrown around quite a bit. But I'd say it's also suitable for children like myself who are 31 years old, because it's just an enjoyable pen to write with. So try them out for yourself. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.